Hello, welcome to Sunfire Designs. Today I am going to be doing an atomic flower, which is my new pour. I have made one and this is gonna be my second one. So I'm excited to see if I can duplicate my results. Um, I am switching things up just a little bit. I'm gonna use an opaque color instead of um, my usual more clear colors for one of my colors and you will see what I mean in a second. Um, so this is my mold, it's my ice chip mold um, and I'm using Art Pro Resin. I mixed up 200 mils of resin and this is what I've got here. So this right here, this is 50 mils of resin and it's a combination. It's kind of like, it's not, I don't know, it's not quite as intense as, um, as dioxazine purple, but it is um, six drops of Dollar Rowney Indigo and two drops of Liquitex Prism Violet. And so it's just this kind of cool bluish purple, more like a dark violet instead of the purple that is, um, that is dioxazine purple. And I'm gonna start off by pouring that on the bottom of my mold. It is pretty dark, so probably a little darker than I intended, but we're gonna see what happens. It's all an experiment, you know? All right, so now my next, let me just show you what else I've got and then I'll start pouring. So this right here is 20 mils, and this is a new color I just got. It's cerulean blue hue, and it is pretty opaque. So I'm gonna use that in there. And then I've got my white. This is 40 mils of white with two drops of Let's Resin Ocean White. And then for my mica powder, this also is a little different. This is, um, it's basically a ghost purple. It's by Estoyo, it's called Magic Violet. Um, so it's kind of really pretty, like milky looking with like a, a violet shimmer. And then I have my push is clear. And then I think I'm going to use these stones again, the um, opal looking stones. I think that they will go really, really well. Okay. So, um, all right. So I poured that in there. I'm just going to torch it really fast because I want to make sure that I don't um, have any awkward bubbles. I don't want to torch it too much though, cause it's not very deep. Okay. So now my next step is I am going to take this cerulean. Hopefully I'm saying that right. It's not a word that I'm used to saying all the time. So it just, that's how it looks to me. And this is the one I'm going to make little dots in here with. So I'm just going to pour little dots and hopefully, you know, they're just gonna be random and they're gonna add just like little, I, I kind of feel like in my mind, it's gonna be like the Milky Way. Like it's gonna add, but then again, it's probably gonna mix with the white and then it won't look anything like my mind, my mind's eye is telling it. But that's kind of the effect like I feel like would have would be kind of like the Milky Way. Also, my son is playing video games, so please, I apologize in advance for any shouting that may come from um, the other room. I did ask him to keep it down while I was recording, but you know, in the heat of the moment, when you're playing basketball or being attacked by zombies or whatever the game of the week is, you know, sometimes you just get distracted and hung up on it. Just so you know, there's nobody being murdered in my house, I promise, except for digitally, maybe like video game, virtual murder, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know if I want to call it that. That still sounds kind of creepy. Anyway, you now you know that the yelling is, you know, video game related. All right, so I'm getting close to the end of this part here. I'm going to go around the outside and put some dots around the outside. My main thing is I just don't want them to touch. And if you put one next to another, it's gonna move the resin so it's not really gonna run into the other one. 
It's about like, you know, putting drops of paint down on um, a smooth surface. They're not going to run into each other. Uh, unless you pour a lot, a lot, a lot. And I'm not pouring a lot, a lot, a lot. So I think this looks really cool. Just as it is. How the blue is kind of moving through the dark bluish purple. And... I don't know, I just think it looks really cool. Like little, I don't know, sea creatures or nebula or something. I don't know, I've got space on the brain. Watch the eclipse. It was really cool. I bought uh, eclipse glasses for my students and then we also watched the live um, feed. I think it was from Mazatlan. And it was the NASA one. It, it showed a lot of Mazatlan, but it also showed some other places, too. And it was really cool. They actually got a lot more excited about it than I thought they would. I thought, you know, they're going to be like, oh, this is science. We got to do it. But they were just super excited. And I had, I even had kids coming in from that I don't know that are not my students or that uh, that are in that were in a different class that wasn't when the eclipse was happening asking if they could borrow my my um eclipse glasses so it was really very successful in my opinion all right so now I'm going to take the um, magic violet and I'm going to go and I'm going to just going to do little drops on top of the ones I already did but then also kind of just random. It doesn't matter if they're on top or not. It just kind of gives me a place to aim for if I put them kind of on top of the blue. So anyway, um, so I got to show the eclipse to two of my classes and then I got to go out and see it. I have not used eclipse glasses before. I've always just used like poking a hole in some cardboard and looking at it on the ground or looking at it um, through, like if you've got a tree, it'll shine through the leaves um, as the light filters through the leaves and you can see the little crescents on the ground. I was not in an area where there was a total eclipse. We only had a partial eclipse of about 75% and it was really, really cool. So I'm glad I, I you know, took the, the chance and bought the the glasses and I'd like to say I would save them until next time however the next time that there's going to be one in my area to see it's going to be 2045 and there's no way I will be teaching still <laughs> at that point so not going to happen anyway so with Lenny Luck I probably I did keep them though and uh, I will leave them for whatever science teacher ends up being in my position when that time comes should, you know, school still be what it is and things haven't changed too much, you know? Yep, there's my son screaming in the background. I apologize in advance. Well, I'm apologizing now. I did apologize in advance and I'm apologizing in the moment because I have no control unless I, like, yell in your ear and ask them to be quiet or, you know, something like that. And it's just wouldn't do a whole lot of good, to be honest. He would just forget in a minute or you would get blasted out by hearing my teacher voice as I yell into the other room to him. Nobody needs to hear that. All right, almost done with this. Here we go, just a little bit more. I think this looks so cool. It just looks kind of like eerie, almost ethereal. I, I don't know. I just think it looks super, super cool. Okay, so now with my white, this is the part that is the atomic part where I do my very best to pour this in like oval shapes, kind of like um, a 2D picture of um, an atom. And I started off being really like um, making fine lines. Whoops, totally went the wrong direction there. As you can see, it's not perfect. 
I'm trying my best to make it as even as I can. But you know how it is. All right, that went fast. I think that's almost gone. Yep. All right, a little bit messier than what I did yesterday, I think, or the day before, whenever it was. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna do my clear push, and then I've got my stones there. Make sure I have a good grip on my cup. I'm gonna be doing that from here on out. I know I'm a little paranoid about it. Someone mentioned it in my comments um, that I replied to. Yes, I am going to be paranoid about dropping my cup into my pores, probably for the foreseeable future, just because I never thought it would happen. And then once it happened, now I'm gonna be worried it's gonna happen again, so. Anyway. All right, so that is the 200 mils in there. Now add my, I think these stones are just perfect because of the way everything is just kind of, it matches, it really matches that, that um, magic violet. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna let it kind of close up and then, so I'll put on a little time lapse so you don't need to listen to my son yell anymore. And I'm going to let it close up and then I will torch it. So I will see you when it's time to unmold. Okay, good morning. Let's see what we've got. It looks so cool on this side. Beautiful petals. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. Will we get the same results? I just realized last night after I poured it that this is, this is almost the exact same color scheme that I used last, last time. <laughs> Whoops, can tell of it. That's my favorite. Here we go. It did. It came out exactly the same with these bubbles in the middle and then the petals. I love it. And look, you've got the purple interference in here, but it's not in every single cell, which makes it look extra cool. Oh my God. I love it. I think I like this one even better than yesterday's. And you can see on the side, like the light blue in here, it just kind of pokes through. Very interesting. I love it. I love it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time. Bye.